Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer at WebMD, and you're watching your health on tech. Have you had to have a colonoscopy? And if you're over 50, I hope you're saying yes. Now, what about an endoscopy to check for bleeding in your stomach? They're not the most comfortable procedures, are they? Well, what if I told you that instead of having a tube inserted down your throat or up through your rectum, you could swallow a pill with a camera? It's an emerging field of medicine. It's even got a name, telerobotics. Joining me is Tori Smith. He's the co-founder and CEO of Endiotics, a company developing micro-robotics for use inside the human body. Tori, thanks for joining me today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a bunch, John. Now, there are other cameras that one can swallow as a pill, but your technology is different, that it uses propellers to, to steer and to move forward. I have to ask you, is it kind of like a, a drone? How, how is it working? That's kind of how we describe it to, to, to regular people in plain English. You know, I, I think everyone was hoping that pill cameras in the late 90s was going to be the end of, say, the colonoscopy or, or, or other procedures like that. But uh, unfortunately, they fell into sort of a, a niche use case. You know, they're used maybe 1% of the time. And, uh, and so we started to ask ourselves, what if we could take elements of the pill camera platform and, you know, maybe take a step forward, maybe address the reason why they, why didn't, they didn't really take hold. And so, yeah, we use little, little propellers to swim around in a fluid medium, but we've tried more than 30 different ways to move around in the GI tract. Right now that's working in the stomach. Yeah. And how did you come up with this idea? I always read about tiny surgical robots uh, going in your bloodstream, or, you know, I would see movies with, with this concept, even down to like the nanoscale. And getting involved in medicine and med devices was, was actually pretty fun because I started to see all of these opportunities. So, you know, as we turn into adults and you start to have a loved one get sick and you go to the hospital, the thing that really shocked me was just the difference between the standard of care that you receive and what you might think the standard of care is as a, as a normal person. It does feel like sci-fi in many ways. And you've referenced watching movies growing up. In some ways, are you a little surprised that we haven't got here sooner in terms of this ability to, to go through different you know, vessels or lumens in our body? Sure, you know, honestly, I, I think if we just kind of look at the overall healthcare ecosystem, not just from the doctor standpoint or patients or hospitals, but also at the world of finance, you know, that funds new ideas and the world of academia where a lot of ideas come from. Um, I think that there's a fair amount of appropriate aversion to risk, right? You know, no one wants to hurt someone because we were trying some crazy idea. Um, but when that mindset kind of goes maybe slightly too far or maybe goes for several more decades, you start to get this pent up demand. You start to get this pent up opportunity. So all I can say is that right around 2014, when the pill camera company Given Imaging sold to Covidian for almost a billion dollars, I was a med device engineer at that time and it kind of got my attention. And I just started asking myself, what if we could take that platform and do more with it, right? And so that's where Endiotics kind of started to gestate. Now I want to show the device. I also have one here <laughs> in my pocket to show the audience. Um, I'm going to be honest, it's a little bigger than maybe I, I thought. <laughs> I, I know I know it's smaller than it had been, but yeah. a patient would swallow this, correct? And right now, you're looking primarily at the GI tract, right? In, in terms of the colon, the stomach, kind of walk us through the process, because I referenced it's very different than a colonoscopy, very different than endoscopy. Right. You know, initially we wanted to take ownership of the entire GI tract. Uh, and in fact, the company's goal, the mission of endiotics, which just endiotics is putting three words together, endoscopy or simply to go within, diagnostics to understand, and TX is medical shorthand for treatment. And we actually, we want to make surgical robots that go into the body and, and actively kill cancer, right? Um, but thank goodness for the existence of the GI tract. That's a, that's a relatively large tube going through the human body. 
And thank goodness for the existence of the stomach, because that gives us our first beachhead to try this concept of a moving pill robot. And so for us, a typical patient would be someone who might have an ulcer or a lesion or some kind of stomach bleed, uh, some kind of belly ache. And instead of sending them into a hospital for sedation and to get tubes slid into their body to have a look around, what if they could just be at home? What if you could skip your breakfast, drink some water, swallow a kind of scary pill, and jump on a Zoom call, like kind of like we're on right now, and actually be able to be face to face with your doctor while they have a look around? That's, they that's control it for. remotely, correct? They would be able to manage yep. it through a pad or other type of Wi Fi device. You say this is going to save lives. So, so? The, the value that we see is that. When we ask upper endoscopy patients what their journey is like getting to the upper endoscopy, we usually hear a story that involves multiple months of hospital visits. Um, they, they often are, are forced to try diets, to try drugs, anything but get that endoscopy, just because there are risks associated with the pre procedure and there are costs associated with that procedure. So our question is, if we can make this really cheap, really safe, uh, really fast and easy, we might be able to actually have that look around inside someone's stomach months or even years earlier in their journey through the healthcare system. Now, you say eventually this is going to be the size of a grain of rice, right? <laughs> you know, if, it, if, our, if our goal is to go to rice grain size, I, I think we have to take a little credit for where we began, right? You know, this was this was our first robot. You can see the propellers inside it. We went from there to custom electronics for the first time, but we started to get smaller. We got to thumb size and this started to get angel investors interested and people in the healthcare ecosystem started to kind of take notice. Um, but we we still had a long ways to go. We, we recently went to Digestive Disease Week with this robot. Um, this had excellent motion in three-dimensional space in a fish tank, um, but still no one's gonna swallow that, right? The current pill that you're holding is the first time where we've really begun to approach the size of a pill camera. What, what, what you have over there is actually 22 millimeters long. Uh, pill cameras are typically about 26 millimeters long, but we're a few millimeters fatter. So we're, we're kind of working on those last millimeters right now. And it's going to become more miniaturized. Will that allow us to go to other areas of the body through blood vessels. Where do you see the future of this? The, the goal here at Endiotics is in fact to go beyond the GI tract. Uh, we would like to go rice grain sized. We would like to roll out the surgical version of this technology, which we call pill surgeon. And then at the rice grain size, what we'd like to call microsurgeon, I would like to do brain surgery. I mean, imagine if you could park a few of these little drone surgeons at the periphery of a tumor. And instead of having to do a hugely invasive procedure, what if they could just hang out there for a little bit and get, get some situational awareness, start snipping away at the blood vessels, feeding and draining the tumor, um, injecting radio enhancers to, to get like targeted radiation. Um, I, I think that a persistent micro robotic presence in the human body could do good, right? And, and I think maybe that's as far as endiotics is currently dreaming. But I don't think this journey ends until the, the, the machines go down to molecular size. And at that point, you know, the, the worlds of the biological and the worlds of the mechanical start to blend a little bit. Will we see this in our lifetime? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I think we have a chance to get PillBot, the moving eyeball in the stomach, into the U.S. market uh, as early as, say, 2024. Because currently um, it's not available in, in this iteration, correct? Right now, we're standing up the quality system and beginning to build an organization that can actually go past muster with FDA mm -hmm. um, to meet the high and appropriate bars they set. Um, but uh, from, from there, I'd say we want to do tissue sampling as probably the first version of pill surgeon. And wow. that could follow on to PillBot relatively quickly. Um, the question of how you retrieve those tissues, tissue samples becomes interesting. Um, and then, then we just go from there. I mean, personally, the thing I'm maybe most excited about in what I would call the relative short term is putting two cameras on the front of the device 
which would allow someone to put on, say, like an Oculus headset and actually have a three-dimensional view of the world around them and be able to make that robot point wherever you point your headset and, believe it or not, bring out your surgical tools and actually go do some microsurgery, even if it's as simple as, say, you know, locating the device and snipping off a polyp and retrieving it for analysis. I mean, how cool would that be? That would be That'd so be much very fun. cool, in indeed. Where can people learn more about you and what you're doing? Sure, honestly, so we've got a presence on LinkedIn. Um, I, I, have a, I have a profile there that's uh, really fun. It's a chance to, to meet founders and, and people involved in deep technology all around the world. We like to put our videos on YouTube under my, my Tori Smith channel. And I do that for a specific reason, which is I feel like by sharing the journey now where our technology is pretty humble, right? Like our video quality right now is it's really not that great. It's not good enough for the market yet. But we like to share the videos. We like to share the progress because before too long, I think we're going to have something in the market that's actually doing a lot of work. And, and I, I think it, we kind of owe it to patience um, to be able to share that journey and just let them know like, hey, our entire team is here to try to help you on the worst day of your life, right? We're, we're not here to profiteer off of your illness. Our goal is to try to cut your costs by 10x. Our goal is to try to open up access by at least 10x, right? And if we're not doing that, then we're letting you down. And so I feel it's important to say these things, share those videos, and you know, basically just try to start a conversation about what the next few decades of medicine might look like. Tori, thanks so much for taking the time today. Thank you so much.